Ooh. Hi, that's you guys. Hello and welcome back to The Average, or welcome to The Average if you're new here. I'm Steph, I'm The Average Artist, and today we have a bit of a fun video. I bought a load of Crayola Beauty stuff from Sephora last week, and I've been dying to try this video idea. We're gonna destroy some eye palette shadow. What am I saying? Some eye shadow palettes today, and if you hate that, please just walk away, because I'm sick of putting disclaimers on my videos. I think everybody takes what I do when I do silly videos very seriously and I'm like no guys please I'm just here to entertain myself and hopefully by doing that entertain you but yeah they come in these cute plastic containers that say Crayola on it and Crayola Beauty I mean they are pretty plain I guess Crayola is a cheap art supply so it's a bit strange that they make makeup now it's a bit random this came out probably about last year there's pesto she sits like here these came out I think last year I Disclaimer, number two. <laughs> I really like makeup, but I'm not a huge expert. So we're just gonna say that this is kind of cool. There's some nice colors in here. I'm not sure how pigmented they are. I am not a beauty guru. They're not very pigmented, but yeah. We're gonna try and make some art with these supplies. So let's just check it out. We've got some neutrals, and then I've got some Crayola lip crayon trios. And here are the, okay, don't open that way. That's fine. Don't open that way. The lip shake. Oh my god, that was really irritating. <laughs> All the lids fell off as I took them out. Wait, what? Crayola, why? Okay, right. They come in red, very cherry, and strawberry. And I'm hoping to use them some way in this piece of art that I still don't know what I'm going to draw. And we also have this one, the Mermaid Eyeshadow Palette. I really like the boxes that this come in with this gradient. I'm a sucker for a gradient. So we have these blues and pinks and purples. Quite nice. I like them. I like them a lot. This is an eyeshadow review, okay? So I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> This is, we're going to make art from these. Now, I'm planning on using this super base that I got with the Stuart Semple Glow in the Dark paint. And I'm not sure it's going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. They could come out super weak and we'll see. I'm going to pull the super base in. I'm not sure which way to do it. Uh, this is all new. So please bear with me, folks. Well, there's no yellow, right? So this could be our yellow. This could be our blue and our red, I guess. Oh, I, I don't, I don't feel good about this. But let's scrape out this blue here. Oh my god, that is so scary but fun. <laughs> this is gonna be messy, I think. Okay, it's gonna be some very shiny paint, definitely. I don't know if I've used too much pigment or not enough or whatever. So we're just gonna try as we go. So it's becoming this really like light pastel-y blue and I think that's because this super base is white obviously and the and the pigment is so light. I'm gonna have to keep trying to mix it up. Of course I don't even know if this is gonna dry or anything so we're gonna do some swatches somewhere in my sketchbook. Okay, of course it's very thin. I mean, I kind of expected that, but, and it dries super fast. Oh no, we can, we can work with this, I think. Okay, that took an age to uh, sort this out. So I'm just going to swatch some stuff. I want to swatch these, so I'm pretty sure these will never dry. But we can play around with them. Maybe we can use them in the background or as our sketch. I'm not really sure what to do with these, but they could be fun to mess around with. 
this whole point of this video is is just to experiment and have fun and I hope you guys enjoy it. It took quite a while to mix it up and I think that it's just super like quite hard to work with obviously because it is makeup but I think it will have like a cool effect once I'm done with it. I think it'll be fun to just see how it turns out. So beginning with this really weird strange concoction that I had made I was really thinking that it was gonna not work out and it was just gonna be too watery and not make enough pigment that I need to create a painting with and I was thinking like oh maybe I could mix it with other paints and then just say it didn't work and like show you that I'm using paints and stuff instead of just using this and using it as like a shimmery layer to help bring some shine to the image but then as I was working this paint it just got better and better because you could just layer down a um a sheet of it with your paintbrush and then when it dried it was pretty solid and you could layer down another thing over it and it was quite opaque which really surprised me because I was expecting this to not work with my tests that I did previously I think I just used water with with it the first time and because I thought like oh maybe a little bit of water would help to I don't know disperse the the lumps of pigment in the paint and yeah, it kind of worked like when I was doing different layers and when I was trying to mix the paints together, it worked out quite nicely. So I would say if you're going to try something like this, then do have a little jar of water. But mostly I went in with just the paint on its own without water and it helped to create really thick layers of this kind of creamy paint. And I really enjoyed it. I really got lost in doing this piece. I just put my music on and I got into the vibe of the painting and this sort of weird ethereal mixed painting that I wanted to do. At first I was really insecure. <laughs> of how this painting was going because I thought like oh it doesn't look anything like a face or a body or anything like I wanted it to but as I was layering bits down and then I would move away from one certain point of the painting and go to a different part I would find that the previous part of the painting that I was working on was dry and I could go back in and do little layers and it was a little bit finicky to work with smaller details and yeah, I went in with fingers. I truly went in and did a um, finger painting here because I felt like I wanted to layer down and get rid of the pigment with of the eyeshadow with it in the paint. So doing that really helped layer down a, a thick layer of paint underneath all the painting that comes after. And then I just got really experimental with it. I think like this really made me let loose and kind of relax into the process of making a painting because I knew this was going to be a fun video, but I didn't know that the outcome was going to be something that I actually really liked. And I'm really happy with the end result that you'll see, but it was just a real process. So yeah, like I was saying with the smaller brush to do little details of the features or the face or just outlining something or hinting at an outline, it was really difficult because it's a thick glob of paint and anybody knows who's painted before when you have a thick uh, bit of paint on the paintbrush, it's difficult to get that finer detail. So I was really trying to thin down my paintbrush into like a, a sort of point and then try to kind of dot on the paints where there was smaller features like the eyes and the lips and stuff and I think that really helped and going back in like I said layering it up really worked and I can't believe that it worked because I was really I was really hopeful that it would work and then I was just expecting it not to because that's just how things go isn't it but it really worked out and I really enjoyed this whole process and getting lost in it I also really enjoyed using this lip cheek crayon it felt really smooth going down and then I blended it out to give that sort of like glow or haze or mystery to the piece and I think the mood of the piece really works well I think using makeup really lended itself well to this vibe that I wanted to get and I was thinking like oh should I just smudge her whole face so you just don't know who she she is and I think that's something I want to play with next time but I wanted to see if I could do like a bit of a, a proper portrait if that is the correct term that I want to use and I think I got away with it I really did struggle with the proportions I didn't like the way the dress was turning out and I just thought 
what I would do is change it as I go. So I'm sort of mixing on, on the paper. I'm just using a plain watercolour paper, by the way, for this piece. So I'm just mixing the paints together and just having fun with it. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I got a bit of um, like a good vibe from this kind of technique. And it made me realise that maybe I want to sort of do something like this for the horror comic. Oh, if you guys don't know, <laughs> I say this every time. I'm making a horror comic, so I'm kind of trying to find the unique style that I want to do to it but this painting was particularly good because um for this development of this horror comic because what happened was as I was layering down the paint um in inverted commas the texture was building up and there was a real roughness to it so what I would do is I would get a little bit of paint lighter paint on the paintbrush and kind of dry brush over the texture of the other bits of the paper where it was rougher and highlight that roughness because it just, it gave a little bit of texture, it highlighted the texture and it's it, as if there's depth there without creating too much work. So it could work well when I'm trying to hint at a background or give a certain look or feel or maybe like mist or shadows or there's something hidden in the darkness and I really enjoy doing that. I used to do that when I was a teenager a lot in my work, like dry brush shadows and things. So it's good to remember doing that because I don't think I've done that for a long time within a piece and I really think that it worked here because it just gave the sense of the, the prom queen here just glowing or something wrong, something eerie and I really enjoyed painting this. To talk a little bit about why I'm painting a prom queen, that is going to be part of the comic and there is a character in it who is a prom queen in the 1950s, 60s and I think this would be a really cool part of the story and a good costume to draw and I really like fashion so it'd be fun to look at old 1950s style. But then I was thinking like I was doing some research and I was writing the other day the comic actually and I was doing a lot of research into, you know, what would be in the 1950s in America because I was looking up tape players and cars and different things and trying to just get like a base layer down of knowledge in my mind so I don't make any really big mistakes of like, hey, they went to the moon and or, you know, something stupid. So I was just doing that and then I was thinking, you know what really works? Like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this film, It Follows, but basically in that film, there's no real set time. It kind of merges different eras and decades decades and it works really well and I was thinking maybe I could do that as well because it, it lends itself to an eerie feel and I think it would be nice to sort of set it in the 1950s 60s but maybe have a hint of future or you know it's a different universe to ours I don't know so I was just looking into that to research and develop maybe an idea I don't know if I'll do that because it's just an idea a strand of thought and I might not follow it I might but yeah I think it helps to create the idea of um just a, a weird vibe within a story because you know you you as an audience or somebody reading it you might feel a little bit uncomfortable that you can't quite place where they are I don't know I think that's kind of the vibe that I want to go for but yeah that's the painting overall and I really enjoyed it it helped me develop my idea for the comic and that's great in my eyes and yeah I think that's it I am happy with this piece and in the end we didn't have to use any other products except for the Crayola stuff and obviously the super base to actually create the paint. I was thinking maybe I could try mixing it with alcohol. I don't know why, like to see what just what would happen. I think that wouldn't probably be great and then I thought maybe I would have to use pencils to define stuff but as I said in my voiceover once I started layering down it just worked out and I really enjoyed it I really got into this piece and I really like the ethereal feeling it has and kind of mysterious horror vibe that it has and yes I'm very happy and I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you don't mind that I destroyed some palettes I it's all for the intent of fun and entertainment so and I hope that you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more of of this stuff and more of this stuff if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time bye